in the last unit, we talked about where the electrons were, are, were. So as a reminder, how do we know where the electrons are? We can have an electron configuration We can have an energy diagram. We can have a Bohr model. We can have Lewis dot structures. And all of those are showing us the ones that are in the valence shell and therefore the valence electrons. Now remember, how can we determine valence electrons and representative elements? Well, remember that representative elements are the ones that are in the S block and the P block, or what we call A groups. And we can tell the number of valence electrons simply by looking at the group number. So these all have one, these have two, these have three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, except helium. These here in the middle are D block, and they don't work and play well. F block, we're ignoring those. So the S and P block. Okay, now I'm going to stick with Bohr models just simply because I like the way that's going to help us as we move forward. Okay, so for example, if I draw a Bohr model of 23 sodium, I have 11 protons, 12 neutrons, N equals 1, two electrons, n equals two, eight electrons, n equals three, one electron. Okay, so if you can't do that and don't understand how I'm doing that, please go back to unit two. Okay, now as a reminder, the group in period for sodium, n equals three, that's the valence shell, group is one. Okay, three and one. All right. What if we want to do, say, calcium or even magnesium? Let's just stick with magnesium. 24 magnesium. Okay, 12 protons, 12 neutrons, N equals 1, 2 electrons, N equals 2, 8 electrons, N equals 3, 2 electrons. Okay? So we're just going to go on across the periodic table, get your periodic table in front of you. The next would be aluminum. Okay, so we're going to say 27 aluminum, 13 protons, 14 neutrons, N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3, Okay, so what we're doing is we're going across the period, okay, and we're just adding electrons. So we're starting here, we're moving across, we could do silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Okay, so I'm going to do those quickly. Okay, I'm going to skip, sil well, okay, let's do silicon. 28 SI... 14 protons, 14 neutrons, N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3, 4 electrons. Okay, it's in N equals 3, group 4. Okay, phosphorus, 31, sulfur, 32. Let's put in chlorine, 35 and argon 40. Okay, so your job is to finish these four, and I'll come back to it in the next segment. Okay? All right. Now, remember we talked about Lewis dot structures. Okay? So the dot structures are a little easier than the Bohr models because we're only interested on the ones that are on the outside, but don't forget, even though we have the ones on the outside, we still have these underneath. Okay, so hydrogen is in group one, so it gets one dot. I don't care if you point it to the right, or point it to the top, or point it to the left, or point it down. It makes no difference. Helium gets two, lithium gets one, 
carbon gets four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, as long as you don't put more than two together. Remember, you cannot put more than two together because you only have two electrons in an orbital. Nitrogen is in group five. One, two, three, four, five is usually how we see it. If you want one, two, three, four, five, that's fine, but remember one, two, three, four, five, no can do. One, two, three, four, five, no can do, and so forth. Okay, oxygen has six. One, two, three, four, five, six is typical, but again, it makes no difference to me because what we're going to do is we're going to put the valence electrons together in a little pot and we're going to redistribute it. Okay, so the proverbial question, why do we care? Who cares? Well, this is now starting new material for Unit 3. So what we've done so far should just be a review. Elements will tend to gain or lose electrons in an attempt to achieve a valence octet. Octet means eight in the valence shell. That is, when it is energetically favorable, this will happen. And this is what is called the octet rule. Okay, so what do we need to do to get a valence octet? Well, we either lose or gain electrons depending on what is the easiest. So that's why I like the Bohr model, okay? So our Bohr model, we see that sodium here has one valence electron. So it can either gain, uh, gain seven, which means the seven electrons basically have to drop out of the sky, or it can lose this one. If it loses this one electron, then we have eight underneath, okay? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one electron, I'm going to lose it, lose one electron, and now we have eight underneath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight underneath. And because we have 11 protons but only 10 electrons, I have 11 pluses and I have 10 minuses, now I get a positive one charge. Okay, so sodium will want to lose that one electron to give it eight in the valence shell, which then gives it eight on the outside and it gets a plus one charge, okay? Magnesium is the same way. It can gain six or lose two. What is easiest? It will lose two, okay? When it loses these two, it has eight on the outside one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have 12 pluses. We have 10 minuses. Eight plus two is 10. So that gives us a positive two charge. Okay. All right. Aluminum. Gain five. Or lose three. If it loses three, we have eight on the outside. It's going to lose three, eight underneath, positive three charge, okay? Now, silicon is smack in the middle. It can gain four or lose four. So it doesn't know what to do. We're gonna come back to this, okay? And then, you finish these, where does this one electron go? Where do these two electrons go? Where do these three electrons go? You can't just lose three electrons, okay? So my, my pens here are gonna be electrons. I can't just lose three electrons and let them sit there. 
They have to go somewhere. So for the next section, finish these four and we'll talk about where these electrons go.